Welcome to my studio. I'm an artist. My name is Leonard Gozianski. And this is where I work every day. This is where I paint my pictures. And I'm going to talk to you today about Picasso and why Picasso is the artist that we love to hate. This painting by Picasso called Guernica was for a long time in the Museum of Modern Art. It is a depiction of the devastation of war. And it has been celebrated as one of the great masterpieces of modern art. It was inspired by a real event, the bombing of the town of Guernica in Spain in the 1930s, during the Spanish Civil War between the fascist government of Spain and the Republican government of Spain. The Republican government of Spain came to Picasso and asked him to paint a picture that would represent the Republican side of the Spanish Civil War. The fascists, in alliance with the Germans and the Italians, bombed the town of Guernica and destroyed about a third of the buildings and a quarter of the population. And this is what Picasso chose to paint. Now, he was paid in advance to make this painting. It's not like it was a spontaneous outburst of Picasso's outrage. And his, this is the finished painting. It's a large picture. It's in oil on canvas. It's in black and white. It is very dramatic and very surreal. And we would look at it today and think that maybe it's a little crude and clunky, a little cartoony. I've heard people say things about Picasso like, well, that looks like something my child could paint. Is it? That's for us to decide. These paintings of Picasso's are in museums, major museums. And if we don't like them, if we go into a gallery, into a museum gallery, and if we say, gee, I don't know, you know, this, this seems kind of crude and childish to me, well, according to uh, critics and scholars, uh, we're just exhibiting our own ignorance, our own inability to appreciate the dramatic beauty, the subtlety of modern art. And then <clears throat> we look at the painting closer and we see this detail of the horse from Picasso's Guernica, the screaming horse, which at the time to Picasso was an expression of the power of animal energy, the despair of animal energy. We might look at it and think that it looks an awful lot like a Saturday morning cartoon. It doesn't look too powerful to us. Especially if we compare it to some other paintings of horses, like this one by Ernst Maisonnier, a French artist. And this is a detail of one of his paintings, Notice how beautifully painted those horses are. They're very dramatic. They're very expressive. They're also very representational, though not photographic, certainly expressive. This is the painting from which that detail is taken. It's called Freedland, 1807, and it represents the cavalry charging off into battle and Napoleon saluting them as they go off to claim one of Napoleon's great victories. Notice how in this painting, the artist uses the grass to express the rushing cavalry as it runs off, charges off to war, off to battle. Now, curators and scholars and critics look at this painting and say, well, it's an inferior work of art. And we would wonder, why is it inferior? Well, because it romanticizes war. It romanticizes battle. It's false. But we would look at it and think, well, you know, there are an awful lot of things that I really love that are romantic depictions of war. When we think of movies like The Sands of Iwo Jima with John Wayne or Russell Crowe in Gladiator, those are romanticized depictions of warfare. And we love those. 
And this seems, this painting seems to be part of that tradition. Here we see another detail from Guernica, uh, the dead warrior, the dying warrior. And rather than seeing this as an expression of the devastation, the despair, the truth of war, which is what Picasso wants us to feel or think or see, we might look at it and see, well, it really kind of looks like a Picasso. Look at those kind of squirrely Picasso eyes and look at that crazy Picasso profile. Is this really about Guernica or is this about Picasso? Is this about an artist trying to create his brand, trying to create his own style? Here we see a truthful depiction of war. This is a photograph by Matthew Brady. Actually, it was by one of his assistants that was taken after the Battle of Antietam of the dead soldiers after the, the Civil War battle in 1802. And when this photograph was published and viewed by the public, it brought home to the public how actually devastating war was, that it was not a romantic thing at all, but it was actually very grim. And this photograph is a very grim depiction of the truth of battle, of warfare. Here we see a another detail from Guernica of a mother and child. And we might look at that and know that Picasso is trying to express the despair of a woman over her dead child. But in our own hearts, in our own perception, we might look at it and think it looks kind of cartoony. Again, there are those squirrely Picasso eyes and that crazy Picasso profile with that pointy tongue. And, well, we've seen that in cartoons on Saturday morning. Especially if we compare it to another painting done about 60 years earlier of a mother and child. This one by Bouguereau is in the Cleveland Museum of Art. It's a gorgeous painting, beautifully crafted, wonderfully drawn. When we look at it, we can't help but admire this painting. And in the museum itself, this painting is admired by the public tremendously. And yet, scholars and college professors and critics will tell us that this is an inferior work of art. Why? Well, because it's so sentimental. It, it sentimentalizes the relationship of a mother and child. Whereas in the previous picture by Picasso from Guernica, that represents the reality of mother and child relationships. Well, we might look at this painting and think, well, this is more like my idea of a mother and child, or at least my ideal of a mother and child. And it's beautiful. And it not only represents the ideal of a mother and child, but it represents the ideal of beauty, truth and beauty. Here we see another detail from Guernica. Here is a building and a woman and fire and... The fire doesn't seems kind of crude, and there are those squirrely Picasso eyes in that crazy Picasso profile, and, and look at those clunky hands. I mean, the artist is deliberately doing that. He's deliberately telling us that, you know, this is what the reality of 20th century life is really like. 20th century is not that Victorian civilization we left behind, but it is this crude, brutal reality which we have created. And it's not as if Picasso doesn't know how to draw hands. If we look at this early work from Picasso, from 1904, this etching, we can see that Picasso really knows how to represent hands. These hands, they're not very realistic, but they are very expressive and very representational and very convincing. There's something that we would all admire. Here's a painting from about 100 years before Guernica by Turner. And it is also of 
a devastating event, the burning of the Houses of Parliament. This painting isn't very realistic. It's more expressive and painterly. But it really captures the beauty of fire. Here, Turner is taking a sort of grim, devastating event and turning it into a work of beauty. This business of beauty, beauty is an objective part of our world. It's part of objective reality. Many of us in our culture might think that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but that's an idiosyncrasy of our culture. It's not something that's universal. In this detail, this is the left side of the painting Guernica, we can see the mother and child, and we can see the fallen warrior, and then we see this bull. And scholars would tell us that that bull is Picasso's alter ego. And when we look at the work of Picasso, we see him using the bull a lot. Is that a representation of him? The bull is very, you know, sort of this randy, passionate animal. And, well, Picasso was sort of a randy, passionate animal himself married four times, sort of devastating to women. Uh, so maybe that is Picasso putting himself into this picture. Again, is this about war or is this about Picasso? And beauty is something that we need, something that we appreciate, something that we love. And if we go into the next gallery in this museum of ours, we might see in the contemporary section things that look like piles of junk and wonder, what is this? Is this some kind of joke? But these are pieces by Robert Rauschenberg, considered one of the great geniuses of contemporary art. But to us, they may look like piles of junk. Now, when I was a student, many of my fellow students loved Rauschenberg. And one of my teachers was a personal friend of his. And they envied his success. But many of us, when looking at these so-called works of art, are impressed by kind of how junky and silly they look. And is this really where I want to be? Maybe I should get out of here. Is this a joke? And maybe, maybe this contemporary art business really isn't for me after all. Maybe I need to just go home and watch TV because art really isn't my thing. And that would be a mistake. Or we might go into another gallery and see minimal art and see people bowing down in front of these canvases that look absolutely empty, just one color, and wonder, I just don't get it. What, what is there going on here? I just don't seem to get what's happening. Why is this in a museum? And we look at that painting on the back wall. That's a painting by Bryce Martin. Now, I met Bryce Martin. I've listened to him talk. He's talked to me about my artwork. And my impression, my personal impression, was that he was kind of a space cadet, uh, kind of a space case, and um, not someone whose intelligence I was very impressed by. And yet, he is one of the celebrated contemporary artists. And he basically paints his canvases one color, or two, maybe three. And we might laugh at it and think, oh, that's awfully silly, but... Those paintings fetch millions of dollars. So who's really the dummy here? Are we sort of just ignorant and stupid because we can't appreciate this? Or do we sense that these really aren't works of beauty at all? At least not to us, they aren't. And then we go to another part of a museum, and we see these works of Egyptian art, and we think, well, these are great. These are beautiful. Look at how well-crafted they are. Look at their wonderful symmetry. This display is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. These works of art are thousands of years old. So beauty and craftsmanship is a quality, an objective quality that transcends thousands of years and thousands of miles. It is very real. Beauty may be elusive, it may be hard to define, but it is certainly very real. And then we have Picasso. 
And we might look at this and think, oh my God, that's really stupid. But there are a lot of people that really like this. Many people. But then there are many, many, many other people who don't, who think that it's kind of childish and, and stupid and crude and why is this here? And I just can't understand this painting at all. But I say that beauty is real, that beauty is objective, that it's something that is a, a, a definitely a solid part of the human psyche. And when we stand in front of, and why, why do I say that? Why, how, how is it that I can say that? Well, if we were in the National Gallery of Art, looking at this painting by Renoir of the girl in watering can, and if someone next to us said, oh, oh, that painting is grotesque, it's ugly, oh, yuck, we would think they were a lunatic. And that's how we know that you know, beauty is objective. It is part of our objective reality. Now, there are those who say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but that's an idiosyncrasy of our time, of our civilization. The character of beauty, of truth and beauty, has been a constant throughout most of civilization, throughout most of history. Now, here we have Picasso's Guernica, and we can look at it and see it as a powerful work of art, as a very expressive work of art, or we might look at it and think that it's mm, kind of a little clunky and a little silly and it really doesn't depict war very well, and it is awfully big and pompous for something that isn't that good, and mm, so maybe this is, painting isn't for me. And yet, there are many people who feel that this is one of the great anti-war expressions, one of the great masterpieces of modern art. And it's for us to decide. It's for us to look into our own souls and decide what we feel is beautiful. Because that's what's important. It's important that we ourselves trust our gut instincts, that we trust ourselves and not the experts, that we make beauty and art an important part of our lives, that we have opinions about it, and maybe those opinions differ from those of the so-called experts, but so what? And then maybe that's why Picasso is the artist that we love to hate. Thank you for watching this video. If you agree or disagree, then you know, leave some comments in the section below. I'll be sure to read them. Also, subscribe, like, and share this video with others. And apparently there's some sort of bell around here uh, that you're supposed to, to, to press, and then that sends a notification to you uh, and also makes this uh, video more popular. So please do those things, and again, thank you very much for watching.